Hey, welcome all of you. Happy Easter. This is the day we celebrate our resurrected Savior. Amen. I want to welcome those of you that are tuning in online as well. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you, uh, you chime in, let us know that you're here visiting with us and, and taking part in the service. Um, he is risen. It's so good. Amen. He is risen. Our Savior has walked out of the tomb. Now, I, I, grew, up, I grew up going to a Lutheran church. Um, a liturgical church, and maybe you did as well, a Catholic church or a Lutheran church, a Methodist church maybe. And, and, and so when I hear that, that phrase, he is risen, that, that's right, yep, that's, that's usually the response that would follow that. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. This is a big deal, amen? amen. I mean, if you call yourself a Christian, if you consider yourself a Christian, this day that we celebrate, this is a big deal. This isn't just, uh, you know, I'm going to go to church. This isn't just, uh, I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to, you know, wear some color. Leo, you look great. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. This isn't just that day, right? If you are a believer, this is a big day. This is the day our Savior walks out of the tomb. This is what we remember today. This is what we celebrate today. It's no small thing. Amen? Amen. You know, if you turn in your Bibles, if you have them with you, to Mark chapter 16, or if you have a Bible app on your phone, go ahead and pull it up. Those of you at home, I want to invite you to do that as well, but turn to the book of Mark, chapter 16, and I want to read just a little chunk of the the resurrection story, just a little piece of of the scripture there. Mark, chapter 16, and it's starting in verse 1. Mark 16, verse 1, it says this, when the Sabbath was over... Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. And I want to stop just real briefly, a side note. So the Bible says that it was when the Passover was over. That's important. In the Jewish culture, during the Sabbath, everything shuts down. No work is allowed during the Sabbath. And, and I believe that's why it's even in the Bible. Is, is just to make sure. It's like, okay, this didn't happen during the Sabbath. When the Sabbath was over, then that's when they went and they bought these spices. Verse 2, it says, Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? Make note of that verse. Who will roll the stone away? Verse 4, it says, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go and tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. We celebrate today a risen Savior. And now there's a whole bunch of reasons why I think that is such a big deal and such an important thing for us to take note of. But just a couple of them. One of them is this. We serve a a living God. And that's a big deal. Our God, listen, the God that we worship, when we say, man, I'm following Jesus It's not simply a statue that's sitting on a shelf. That's not our God. Even this, even a cross that's hanging on the wall, that's not our God. Our God is alive. And that's so important. And He's not just alive, but He's he's living inside of us. That's the God that we worship. If you're here and you're a Christian, that's our God. And He is alive. He walked out of the tomb, and it's a big deal. Amen? Amen? It really is. It's so important that we understand that our God is alive. The other thing that it shows us is this. It's the power of God. You see, again, the God that we say we worship, the God that we come before, the God that we surrender to, our God is all-powerful. You read the Bible, and I hope you read your Bibles, and I hope you believe what the Bible says. The Bible says that God created everything. Listen to me, out of nothing, I know some of you are really creative, you can take material, you can take wood, you can take metal, and you can make some really cool things. You can create out of what has already been created. Listen to what God did. What God did was when there was nothing, 
Listen, when there was nothing, God spoke things into existence. That's the God that we worship. The creator of all things. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. That's who our God is. And he shows his power by raising Jesus to life. You see, we've got to remember this. When we talk about his crucifixion, it's not pretend, Eric. It's real. As real as if it were me or you. Jesus became lifeless. That means his heart stopped beating His lungs stopped filling with air. He had had holes in him. Like physically, he had holes in him. His hands, his feet, the spear in his side. He he was dead. He was laying in the tomb, completely lifeless. But then comes the power of God. And by the power of God, his lungs fill with air again. His heart starts to beat again. This is who God is. This is who we worship. So as we talk about a risen Savior, as we talk about Jesus walking out of the tomb, it's it's a great example of the power of God. Amen? Amen? Our God is alive. Our God is powerful. And I go back to this, that phrase, these ladies, because it's important we understand this. This isn't a fairy tale. This isn't a nursery rhyme. This isn't a fiction book that we read. I hope you don't read your Bible and think it's fiction. I hope you don't think it's just good stories. Because as I read it, what I read is real people, just like us, Arlie. Real people going through real life things. You have these two ladies, right? They're they're going. They're they're going to the tomb because they're going to they're going to anoint his body, these customary things. They're going to do this, but then they come to this realization They say, wait a minute, who's going to roll away the stone? This is a real life problem they have. Because if you've been there, if you've seen these tombs, a a lot of the tombs are laid in, like you can walk into these tombs. That's a big hole, isn't it? And the Bible says that there was a stone that was covering that hole. That's a big rock. (laughs) Amen? That's a big stone. And they come with this problem. Wait a minute, who's going to roll the stone away? Because this is an impossible situation for them. And I know, I said this earlier, there are strong women in this church. Amen? Amen. Doggo, that was an opportunity for you to say amen. Amen. (laughs) Unbelievable. I get, he, he, wake up. Do I got to come stand right in front of you? What's the deal? Too many Easter eggs this morning. <laughs> the sugar crash is just happening right now. This, this is an impossible situation. That's what they're facing. And the question is, who will, who will, who will roll this stone away? Here's what I want you to understand today, because that's a key verse in today, this message. There are many of us that are sitting here that have that question. Because if that stone doesn't get rolled away, that new life can't come, can it? Do you understand that? If that stone stays in front of that tomb, there's no way to walk out of it. For many of us, that's the question. Who will roll the stone away of the things that are in my life? See, because maybe I want to live. I want to be free. I want to experience his presence. I want to have that hope. I want to have that joy. But listen to me, inside of us, maybe in our soul or in our heart, it's brokenness. There's pain. And and for some of us, it's been by our own choices. Some of us, like me, I, I made a ton of mistakes. I created a whole lot of trouble in my own life. But for others of us, it's by no fault of our own that these things happen. Abuse takes place. Betrayal takes place. And there's all of this inside of us. And basically what can happen is is there's a stone that's rolled in front of that. And the question that we can have is, okay, but who can roll that stone away so that I can live again? And here's what I want you to understand. God is the same today as he was 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago was when God rolled that stone away. 
2,000 years ago is when he breathed new life into Jesus. 2,000 years ago is when that heart started pounding again. And it's easy for us to think, well, he's probably changed since then. In the world that we live, we, we just got a new cell phone plan. We, we switched over, and so we're at the, the, the cell phone place, and, and we're doing all this. And I'm telling you what, cell phones are, it, it's like, they're, they're amazing, but man, is it a hassle. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you go in there, and it's crazy when you go in there. I mean, it's half the day, first of all. Just like, what in the world? And whatever, you, you get the iPhone 376 ZXW. That's now the version we're at, I think. Because they keep changing. There's a new one every day, and the one you get is outdated before you leave the store, right? It's like, it's just waiting for the new one to get. You know what I want to do? I want to go back to the good old days. I don't want to go back that far. Some of you, I'm not going to name names, can go back to when it was like pounding on a tablet. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But I, you know what? Here's what I want to go back to. Life was easier. It was more simple. You, I like cell phones. You can get a hold of people and people get a hold of you. But you know what I like? I want to go back to a flip phone. Amen. You know what I mean? It's like, just give me that easy, simple flip phone. My youngest daughter was with us and we were in there getting this plan. And I start talking about a flip phone. She's like, Dad, don't even. Like, like, we're not going to talk about a flip phone in front of people. That's embarrassing, you know? <laughs> but it was so much easier. It's just this tiny little flip phone. It fit in my pocket. You flip that thing open, and that was cool, right? I remember I, remember I still had my flip phone because I held out, you know? It's like, I'm not giving in to this doggone smartphone thing. It's just a nuisance. And people would have these smartphones, and I'd be like, no, that's cool. But can yours do this? And then I would open and close it, you know? <laughs> Just to show off my technology a little bit. But it was a simpler time. Everything is constantly changing and advancing. And here's what I want you to know today. God doesn't change. He doesn't. He doesn't have to change. God is already God. God is already magnificent. God is already all-powerful and all-present and all-knowing. That's who God is. And the same God that rolled the stone away 2,000 years ago that allowed Jesus to stand and walk out of the tomb, he's the same God today that will roll the stones away for you so that you can live again, so that you can be free, so that you can experience healing, so that where there's hopelessness, you can have hope. Where there's nothing but pain, you can, you can, you can have joy today. Because God is still rolling stones. Even when you think you've gone too far. Even when you think you've strayed too far off. Even when you think there's too much pain. There's too many mistakes. God can roll that stone away. God can bring that new life. Hebrews chapter 13, 8. Says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Church, today I want you to find comfort and confidence in knowing that God doesn't change. He's still rolling stones today. He's still setting people free. He's still bringing hope and encouragement. That's who God is. John, John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, I have come that you may have life. That's why. We have this opportunity today to experience that. But there's something that has to happen first. You see, when we talk about Good Friday, we talk about Good Friday. Good Friday is the day that Jesus was crucified. That's what we remember that day. That's Good Friday. You see, without Jesus' death, the resurrection isn't possible, is it? Doggo, you still awake? Okay. Without the crucifixion, the resurrection is not possible. And without the, res the resurrection, now hear this, without the resurrection... The crucifixion is just another death. Because the crucifixion, that wasn't a new thing for Jesus. Like, they didn't design this just to kill Jesus. This was something that the Romans did regularly. Crucifixion was just part of their everyday life. There were many people crucified. It, without Jesus walking out of the tomb, he's just another guy that got crucified. That's it. The two go hand in hand. Do you see that today? The crucifixion, the resurrection go hand in hand. But here's the deal. The same holds true for me and you. 
You see, without the death, we can't have the new life. On Friday, if you were here, you, you walked into the lobby, and in the lobby, a, a couple of people, uh, Gina Johnson and Pam Campbell, they created a garden in the lobby. What you see out there today, it's just a little piece of what was there Friday night. And the whole purpose, what we wanted to design, was this, this feeling of being in the garden, because the garden is where Jesus died first. When he said three times, not my will, but your will. He's dying to himself. He's dying to his own desires. He's dying to what he wanted and surrendering completely to what God wanted. He died. The same thing holds true for me and you. In our everyday life on this platform on Friday night, it was full of stuff. Over here, there was a scene of, of our recreation, the things that we like to do, maybe. There was a kayak, a big orange kayak leaning on the wall. Rifles, shotgun, my bow, golf clubs, tennis racket. There was all kinds of stuff here, and it represented the recreation in our life. One area of life, we need to surrender to God and say, you know what, even in this stuff, I am going to follow you. In the center here, there was a bunch of different stuff that represented our work. There were tools, there were wrenches, there was a, a desk and a computer. The, the different things that would represent our jobs, a lab coat, that even at my job, I want to surrender to you. Not my will, but your will. Over here, there was a scene set up with a couch and lamps and kids' toys representing our home. To say, in my home, I want to surrender to you. You see, church, it's more than just about what we do at church. It's about our entire life. Saying, God, I want to die to myself in my entire life, in every aspect of my life. I want to die to myself. I want to surrender to you. Not my will but your will being done. And you see, without that death, without us dying to ourselves saying, it's not about me, then we don't have that life in him. It's, it's not about me. It's all about you. Not my will, but your will. In the gardens of our life, to choose to say, I want to die with you and be raised again. And I think that this is such a beautiful picture. This, this behind me here is our, is our baptism tub. And I love this being here today. I, I really do. I just absolutely love it. I love it's here. I love it's right under the cross. I love it's front and center. I just love it. Because here's what baptism is for us. Baptism is the symbolism of us, say, us saying, yes, I, I want to die to myself. I want to go down in that watery grave and I want to be raised anew again. Galatians chapter 2, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but he lives in me. That's what we want. That's what our desire is. Just as Jesus died in the garden, just as Jesus gave his life, was buried, God rolled that stone away, and he was raised to new life, and that's what, that's what our desire is in this place today. That there would be those who would say, yes, Lord, I want to die to myself. God, would you roll the stones away in my life so that I can live new? Romans chapter 6, I love what Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 1, says this. Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptized into death in order that, now listen, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You see, there is a choice that we make to say, God, I want to die to myself. I want to go down into the watery grave. And I want to be raised anew again in you. And ba baptism isn't salvation. Salvation, the Bible says, comes through faith. That's how we are saved. Baptism, it's that proclamation that says, I have joined with him. I want to die to myself and be raised anew again.
But I think oftentimes that first piece is the most difficult piece. That part to say, I, I'm willing to die to myself, because here's what that means. That means I put my pride aside. It means I put my personal desires aside. And it's saying it's not about me. I'm, I'm dying to myself, and I am publicly proclaiming my faith in Jesus. When we say he is risen, when we talk about Jesus standing and walking out of the tomb, that demands a response from us. What do you do with that? You, personally. What do you do with the conversation where we talk about a guy who was completely dead, being raised to life, and walking out of a tomb? What do you do with that? Do you believe it? Do you believe that Jesus was crucified on that cross? That he literally had hands or nails in him? That he was pierced with a sword? Do you believe that his body was completely lifeless? And do you believe that he was laid in a tomb? That he was laid on this rock bed, wrapped up and left there with a stone rolled in front of him? Do you believe that today? Do you believe that Jesus, by the power of God, do you believe that all of a sudden, at some point in there, all of a sudden, his lungs filled up with air again? All of a, all of a sudden, his heart beat. we got to remember this. He wasn't a ghost. The Bible tells us that. He physically rose from the dead. Do you believe that today? And if you're there and you believe that today, what are you doing with that? Are you willing to say, I do believe that you are the Messiah. I do believe that you are the Son of God. I do believe that you died, that you rose again, that you ascended into heaven, that you are seated on a throne today, right now. Do you believe that? What do you do with that today? Because what I would challenge you to do with, with it is this. Surrender your life to him. I believe, Jesus, that you are the Messiah. I believe, Jesus, that you are my Savior. I want to surrender my life to you. And I want to show the world.